Well, would you look at that? The first video I'm posting in 2017. In a year, we can look back at this video and say... We had no idea what we had coming. So another year has passed, which means we're all one year older, which means we're growing as people, which... <laughs> I'd, yeah, this is a stretch. I didn't have a transition. As a youngster, I was prone to believing people pretty much unconditionally, as with most children. I just had too much trust for my own good. Like, oh, why would anyone have any reason to lie to me? The world is full of nothing but nice people and purity. Of course, I've grown out of that mentality and am a lot more cautious. But for a while, people could just tell me things and I just believe them. I got thinking about all the ridiculous things people put in my head that I stored as facts. And I decided to make a list of the craziest ones. And also just letting you know I was like younger than seven in all of these stories. Don't worry, I didn't just find out these things aren't true like a couple months ago or anything. When I was in first grade, for some reason my mom told me aluminum foil is poison and if I ever bit it, I'd die. A bit strange, but I think I know the idea behind it. Apparently, biting foil can induce a galvanic shock. Basically, if the foil comes in contact with braces, metal fillings, something like that, the metals will react with each other and create a little electric shock. But all I knew as a kid was teeth, contact with aluminum foil, death. And I was petrified. I didn't even have braces or anything metal in my mouth at the time, so nothing would have even happened if I tried it. I also remember going to school the next day and telling my friend, did you know that if you bite aluminum foil, you'll die? And she goes, I think I've bit foil before. And I was like, how are you not dead? Grasshoppers spit acid in your shoes. This one probably needs explaining too. I was at recess with some friends and we were running around in the grass without our shoes on. When we went back to put them on, there was a little grasshopper sitting at the bottom of my right shoe. Guys, look, a cute little grasshopper is wearing my shoe. And one of my friends goes, Oh my god, grasshopper spit acid! Get it out! And then we all start panicking at the fact there was a death grasshopper in my shoe. I looked up why she could have thought that, and it actually is a fact that grasshoppers can spit a brown liquid to protect themselves from predators. It's called tobacco juice, and even though it's slightly acidic, the worst it really can do is stain your clothes. It's pretty much harmless. But oh, dude, no. I had the image in my head of some breaking bad hydrofluoric fluoric acid, dissolve through everything it touches kind of meme. Also, just saying, I didn't mean the drug acid, even though that could be equally terrifying. Speaking of staining clothes, I was at lunch one day with the rest of my class, and one boy took out a bag of pomegranate seeds his mom packed for him in his lunch. A lot of us hadn't seen them before because it's a bit of an exotic fruit, so it caught some attention and we were all asking a bunch of questions about them. The boy said, did you know pomegranate seeds can stain your clothes and it'll never come out? <gasps> Whoa, that must be one powerful fruit. It never comes out, never ever forever. Not even with the power of OxyClean laundry stain remover. It gets the tough stains out. And then we watched the kid eat a bag of pomegranate seeds sitting sideways with the seeds on the space next to him because he didn't want to spill them on himself. Looking back, it was definitely just his mom exaggerating because she didn't want to have to deal with the stains in laundry. A sly parenting trick if I do say so myself. It's weird to think she's out there somewhere and she doesn't even realize she accidentally taught me that lesson too. This one's actually kind of common to believe, and I think a lot of people have been passing this myth around for a long time. Sitting too close to the TV is bad for your eyes. I did research on this one as well, and even though it might seem like it could be true, there's apparently no actual evidence that sitting in front of the TV is damaging to your eyes. But oh, little old Jaden believed it, and you know what I did with that information? Stand directly in front of the TV. Yeah, for some reason when I was younger, I really, really wanted glasses. I don't know where that came from. I just liked the look of glasses and wanted them. So when no one was looking, I would go up to the TV screen and stare at it. Like one inch away from my face. This'll get me glasses. But it didn't work, obviously. I actually have really good eyesight. Maybe standing too close to the TV will improve your vision. But yeah, I'm glad my eyesight sabotage plan didn't work because having glasses just seems like a hassle and inconvenience. Tip of the hat to anyone out there with glasses or contacts or even glass eyes that are annoyed by them. Wish you the best. We people without those things forget how good we have it. This one's a bit related because it's about eyeballs again. If you try to use your eyes to look back into your head at your brain, they'll get stuck and you'll be blind forever. It's it's a bit of a spin-off of the other eyeball myth of if you cross your eyes too much, they'll get stuck like that. I never believed that one, but I believe this brain one. A friend told me once that if you tried to look at the back of your head with your eyes, you might be able to see your brain, and we spent the whole day trying to do it. Then when I went home, I asked my mom about it, and she said, don't do that, they'll get stuck. 
I think I believed it so quickly because if you try, it does kind of hurt your eyes a bit because they're not really supposed to be able to look back into your head like that. And I thought that was like your body saying, don't push it, this is a warning. And even to this day, I'm a bit nervous pushing my eyes to their rotation limit. I don't know how else to say it. I know it's not true, but it's still always in the back of my mind, which I'll never be able to see. And finally, the most ridiculous thing I believed. So I don't know how this happened. No one told me this. I don't understand where I went wrong here, but somehow I ended up confusing the disease tetanus with AIDS. I don't know how I did that. Back then, I didn't even know what AIDS was. And yes, I am considered a PG channel for the most part, so if you're a youngster watching and you don't know what AIDS is, your parents will explain it more in a few years. It's a disease that you don't need to worry about for the time being. Only adults should need to worry about it. So yeah, I thought tetanus was called AIDS. The disease that you can get from an infected cut was called AIDS to me. And the worst thing about it is this one time someone accidentally cut themselves on a rusty shovel and I have the memory of saying, careful, you could get AIDS. <laughs> what? Why? How did this happen to me? I don't understand what went wrong. How do I mix those two things up? But whatever, I know the difference now and that's all that matters. But I do sometimes mix up saying tetanus and Tetris. Careful, you could get Tetris. I ended up learning a lot while making this video, and since I debunked a bunch of lies, I'm gonna tell you a truth I found out recently, real quick, since this is the end card. So a friend asked me, what's the purpose of pink lemonade? And I was like, good question. So I looked it up, and I'm not talking about the lemonade from strawberries or any fruit to change the color. Classic pink lemonade. So apparently, pink lemonade originated because a long time ago, way back in the day, there was a concession guy selling lemonade at a circus, and he ran out of water and he had to hurry and find some more, and there was no river or stream nearby. And he found that a performer had just washed their red tights in some water, which turned it pink. So he used that pink water to make more lemonade, and just told people it was a special strawberry type lemonade, and he sold a bunch more lemonade. So next time you drink pink lemonade, the image of dirty circus tight water might pop into your mind. Sorry.